Hello friends, welcome to the official YouTube page of Everest IAS Academy. So today we are going to discuss January 18, 2020 Hindu newspaper analysis from the UPSC prelims 2020 point of view. So let's go into the video friends. The first article which came in the headlines is uh, Citizens can skip question on place of birth of parents in NPR form, says center. So basically friends, this article comes in the backdrop of uh, recent actually Citizenship Amendment Act that protest which are happening in the various parts of the country. As part of that what happened is that our government wanted to give actually citizenship status to the uh, like non-muslim minorities from three neighboring countries Pakistan, Afghanistan and Bangladesh who have faced religious persecution. So now what happened since they have included non-muslim communities what happened there have been various protests happening in the country. In addition to that actually this uh, citizenship amendment act has introduced a new cutoff date that is the December 31, 2014 as the cutoff date to identify the citizenship uh, status of the country. So now what happens is that uh, there is uh, one more exercise which is called as NRC. This has been as of now it has been done uh, only in the state of Assam. So now what happens is that it refers to the national register of citizens. So now what happens is that this NRC based upon this cutoff it can identify a person into two main categories that is it can identify the persons who are citizens of the country based upon the documents and those who are illegal migrants. So now what happens is that as part of the census exercise which happens every once in 10 years so our government is going to do the exercise for 2021 census exercise. So now our government is going to do this exercise from April to September month. In addition we are doing one more exercise called national population register. So this register it, national population register it refers to the collection of all the residents of the country and this residence includes even Indian residents as well as foreign residents. So once this data is available in this national population register, our government which has actually given has done a pilot project previously in last year, that time actually it has introduced some additional factors like Aadhaar number, mobile number, driving license number and then even the date of birth of the like father and mother and their place of birth, they were also included. So various like citizens across the country were very skeptical that this data can be used to prepare the national register citizens of the country and once this data is used to identify this uh, national register of citizen means then illegal migrants will be identified and they can be sent to detention camps so that is why the people are actually protesting in the country as part of that recently a meeting happened for conducting this census exercise and national population register various state governments went and participated in that various uh, actually non BJP ruled states they have actually made it very clear to the home ministry that uh, to remove the column on the place of birth and uh, like father and mother and in addition one more thing is uh, what the government has also told there is no need to show any documents uh, during this uh, census exercise and whatever the citizens uh, they say orally that data will be recorded and one more thing is friends as part of census exercise this is the first time we are going to use the mobile app uh, for connecting the census exercise next article is uh, last ndfp faction in azam calls for center so basically they are talking about this national demographic front of boroland so we will discuss this organization friends which will be most useful for mains and the prelims also some basics can be asked so now what happened the central government and then azam government and this uh, ndbp in that there is a one factional group one group among in this organization various groups have split during the time period so now what happened in that one fraction we call it as NDFBS uh, that is the Sorigua fraction. This is actually considered to be the last faction uh, like it is the last group which is uh, which came out in this NDFP and this is actually uh, they came for this uh, peace deal. So let's go and study some basics also friends this national demographic front of uh, Boroland. So what it is all about. So basically what they are asking means they are asking a separate actually if within the state of Assam if you see friends they wanted this Boroland communities they are actually asking for a uh, like autonomous area there are two groups friends in this uh, national demo like in this board of board of people generally two groups are there one group actually is asking for like uh, within the Assam state they are asking their area to be marked as separate state and some autonomy has to be given to them for administering that is one demand and there was one more group actually what they are asking is a separate country only they wanted to administer themselves so this is where this uh, uh, like the uh, like the problem happens that is why what 
what happened since they asked for the sovereign borderland status our government has designated this particular organization because that's may this organization's main objective for creating a separate borderland country that's why it has been designated as terrorist organization for by our government only if you see the history how it has evolved means initially there was there was a bodo security force so it is considered to be a militant group this was formed during 1986 friends and what happened in 1994 only actually this national demographic front of borderland this name came into being so at that time our central government from that time period it went for various agreements and those uh, like bodo accord the those were actually rejected by these groups and instead what it has done it has went for attacks on the actually the whoever uh, forms non borderland civilians normal civilians apart from their community they went and attacked even the security forces have been attacked so that's why they have been declared as terrorist organization and later what happened in 1996 actually it even attacked like there was a the, like people who are a form of these adivasi communities who were settled in that assam area so there was clashes happened happened between them and in addition what happened this adivasi cobra force was formed so as a rival militant group to this borderland group so now what happened friends so due to various conflicts which emerged later what happened is that there was within this national demographic front of borderland if you see like after 1996 so before that there was not any groupism as of so after that only there was a like a group which formed that is that one group within the national demographic front of borderland is called as bodo liberation tigers so what happened these people actually they went and signed a peace deal with the government because of that this borderland group got, they got angry and they actually attacked them all them also this borderland liberation tigers were also attacked by this national demographic front of borderland and after that what happened it has later expanded and uh, like they created uh, attacks on even illegal migrants who come from bangladesh also for them also they go went and attacked that's why it is considered to be very serious issue and what happened at that time period our government wanted to have a control upon them so that time actually what happened these people from the assam they went and hide in actually like bhutan so now what happened when they went and uh, like hide had their hideouts in bhutan our government actually uh, like had a one operation especially with the help of bhutan army we had a operation on layer so based upon that we okay, we like we signed a ceasefire agreement that time in 2005 and now the later that what happened friends so the progress there is a progressive action after this ceasefire agreement they actually went and signed a peace deal with the government again a group which actually got separated this is how it created various separatism groups and the final out uh, groups which was created is that nd fb s group this is a group which has we have signed a peace agreement recently so bodos if you see friends as we have discussed they have a ethnic linguistic community ethno linguistic community ethnicity is nothing but friends like that these are the group of people who have who speak common language who have a common history common ancestral origin and then common culture based on that they will form a separatist groups so that's why bodo bodos are considered to be a separate ethnic linguistic group and they usually say they are native to this brahmaputra valley in assam state So next article is uh, noted Kathak dancers stopped from performing to Kavali. So basically, friends, uh, from the prelims point of view, we should understand the Kathak Kathak dance and also the ka- Kavali, which we call it as now. So we will go and discuss all the both the things. Uh, basically, if you see, India is considered to be the birthplace of Kavali, and um, that's why actually like uh, this particular Kava Kavali music, it is considered to be a Sufi devotional music. It was actually. Uh, like not allowed to play that's the problem here so from the prelims point of view we will first study this kathak dance basics uh, we know friends in india there are eight classic classical dance and among them one classical dance is kathak dance so kathak dance if you see basically what they will do in this dance means they will tell the story with the help of a dance so they also have another name called kathakars which is called as storytellers so they will tell these stories in through this dance and music and they will use various hand movements and extensive footwork and one important thing is their facial expressions especially their eyes so through their eyes only friends they will convey all the stories and the foot movements that's why in kathak foot movements plays a very major role foot movements and facial expressions through eyes and in case of kavali it is basically a sufi islamic sect within islam we have this sufi sect so basically what happens is that this sufi this uh, religion it uh, like it is a religion which is considered to be a sect within islam 
it emerged during even it has its uh, presence during the bhakti moment so what happens is that since it has its islamic origin that's why this music has been opposed for playing so next article is G sat 30 gives India a communication boost. Basically, friends, this G sat 30, its weight, if you see through the we have launched around 3,357 kilogram weight satellite we have launched. So basically, where we have launched means in a South American country which is called as Guyana. So in that place we have launched this uh, G Sat 30. So why? What is the necessity for our ISRO to launch this satellite in other country? Means if you see means basically friends, this is considered to be a heaviest satellite. As of now, if you see in India, we have uh, like three GSLV. We have GSLV Mac 1 and then Mac 2 and then Mac 3. Mac 3 still it's in the uh, preparation stage still we are designing so if you see gslv mac 1 the capacity is 1500 kilogram weight it can carry gslv mac 2 it can carry up to 2500 kilogram gslv mac 3 we are planning to launch for our chandrayaan 2 mission so this we are going to launch this year it can carry up to 4000 kilogram uh, like uh, weight so now still we uh, this gslv mac 3 is in the designing process we took the help of foreign uh, space mission that's why we have launched this mission in another country and what is the major benefit of launching this insect 30 basically before going into that we you, friends we should understand some of the basics regarding pslv and then gslv space launching this uh, vehicles basically friends if you see polar vehicles they will uh, they will move from this is the north pole if you see and south pole of the earth polar vehicles will move from pole to pole so that is the pslv launch vehicles and these are actually launched in the low earth orbits and one more thing is friends if you see this uh, polar pslv rockets which we launch these pslv satellites basically what we, happens is that they will move from one pole to another pole and they are always in a dynamic motion so they will be usually used to do earth observation or like they will be used for remote sensing basically they will be used for remote sensing purposes so uh, from the rim, uh, like uh, with the help of these satellites we can keep an eye upon what is uh, like what is the resources which are happening uh, what is the agricultural paddy fields so all those images can be taken with this help of pslv launch vehicle but if you see gslv space launching vehicle it will move through this from equator to equator now what happens is that friends in this gslv satellites these are placed in the high earth orbits that is at a height of like uh, in the elliptical orbit 30000 kilometers from the earth surface and one more thing is with respect to gslv this uh, rocket these satellites is these satellites will look stationary when you look from the earth surface because the earth has its own rotatory motion and this satellite has its own revolutionary motion around the earth so both the air speed actually tend to match that's why it will uh, be looking stationary when we look upon from the earth surface if you see friends earth rotates always and with that rotation the satellites also revolve around the earth surface that's why if any point of on the air surface if you see these are always considered to be static so the one main advantage with this static thing is geostationary satellites is we can actually uh, like do communication purposes suppose uh, friends if you see from the earth if you do if you send any signals it will be reaching that satellite and the same signal will be sent back it will uh, like information will be got back that is the advantage in pslv we can't do that that's why we have went for gslv uh, 30 satellite it's basically a communication satellite uh, pslv main purpose is remote sensing like uh, they will assess the air resources and uh, gslv's main purpose is communication what communication means dtth so dtth television services and even internet uh, that we sat that is that video uh, video sat uh, video things we can see and one more thing is atms and then televisions all these works with the help of gsat communication satellite only that's why it's considered to be crucial some other differences if you see friends between pslv and C, uh, like gslv generally if you see pslv consists of four stage launch vehicle that is solid liquid solid liquid but if you see gslv it is a three stage rocket which consists of solid as a first stage second stage as a liquid third stage is a cryogenic uh, engine cryogenic means we will have liquid nitrogen and then liquid oxygen at very low temperature that is at minus degree temperature like up to 180 degrees celsius it will be there and uh, remaining things we have discussed already friends uh, remote sensing satellites uh, so basically pslv is a remote sensing satellite as we have discussed they move from pole to pole and the gslv satellites the geostationary satellites will remain stationary permanently it will be fixed in a position 
So next article is government failed in e-mobility mission says please in uh, Supreme Court. Basically what happened is that our government had one plan that is called National Electric Mobility Mission. This plan has been initiated in 2012 only but no take off. Nothing has been done regarding that. So a petition has been filed in the Supreme Court that there is a serious non-implementation of this policy. Especially this National Mobility e-mobility Mission which we have uh, created in 2020 also. We have revised it. So what this policy or plan is all about means we want to fast track the usage of electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles in the country so uh, as part of that uh, that comes under the department of heavy industries we have one separate scheme called fame india that is faster adoption of manufacturing uh, electrical and hybrid vehicles so this is what we are going to do on a fast track process and uh, we are going government is also going to give incentives to them to who are going to use these electricity vehicles so what are the other benefits of using electric vehicles so before going into that we should understand what is hybrid vehicle hybrid vehicle means nothing friends it will have electric as well as normal petrol or diesel engine also both these things can be used so now what happens is that this can be used to uh, like electric vehicles or hybrid vehicles will promote fuel security because uh, that uh, uh, like whatever petrol diesel that uh, uh, security can be created why because the uh, usage of uh, like this petrol diesel can be reduced and it will be affordable also and environmental friendly more than anything that is the main objective we are going to bring and our ambitious target we wanted to produce uh, around if you see six to seven million means around 70 lakh like, vehicles we wanted to sell by this year only that's why this petition has been piled in the supreme court next article in the editorial if you see friends fighting radicalization this is as we have discussed yesterday only our army general went in the raisinia dialogue <coughs> <clears throat> there he has told there has been a significant increase in radicalization among youths of the country from age group of 10 to 12 uh, in that what he has said is that these you you should be like isolated from the normal people and they should be uh, like uh, placed in this de-radicalization camps radicalization we have discussed yesterday only radicalism or radicalization as a process they will try to challenge the established norms and policies of the country so suppose established norms or policies means even they can challenge the government policies or their decisions and they will not uh, like go to violence all the cases they will actually adhere to law and order basically they will follow order but they will they wanted to achieve all this through political dialogue and uh, this is considered to be serious because radicalized youths can later turn into extremists or like even they can be turned into terrorists also that's why they need to be isolated that's what our army general also said but what the hindu uh, like especially this author has been criticizing means segregation of youths at the young age from their family they will miss their socialization values which they get that's the first thing so a second so it will actually lead to further isolation and frustration and even it will actually promote further radicalization only and if you see friends what this hindu author is saying as a solution means we can better go for re re like de-radicalization uh, through better teaching and in the school curriculum only the children can be educated so that they can be uh, like de-radicalized so next article in the editorial is quite far now basically friends this article talks about that uh, phase one trade deal phase one trade deal this was recently signed between usa and china so basically what happened is that uh, they they had a trade war which was happening when trump came into like uh, when he became the president of usa he pursued a policy called american first policy america first policy as part of that policy what he did is that he wanted total world trade only has to be favor of usa companies only so he saw that uh, actually chinese are actually uh, like selling their inferior quality goods uh, uh, fake quality goods into USA market. Second, they are having USA is having a high trade deficit with China. In addition, um, in case of China, whichever US companies went for uh, like investments, uh, they forced them to go for technology transfer, and they like they have done this on a like compulsory basis. So IPR, their intellectual property rights has been affected. So all these problems on this backdrop. There was a trade war which went, uh, happened between USA and China. What they did is they went for actually raising the tariffs of each other countries on their import of the goods. Like USA raised the import tax of Chinese goods and China did the same thing on USA goods. So in the world also parallelly there was a serious slowdown which happened. So when the Trump government understood this we have to we have to like go for a negotiation. He went for this phase one trade deal. As of now the tariffs were uh, most of the goods which were in the 15% tariff rate we have ready to 7.5 percent still it has been not been eliminated on a full scale that's what the major criticism and as of now one major benefit is that china like it can it will buy 
லைக் அமெரிக்கன் லைக் சோயா பீன்ஸ் ஃபார்ம் குட்ஸ் வில் பி பாட் ஃப்ரம் தம் டைரி ப்ராடக்ட்ஸ் பவுட்ரிஸ் ஃபிஷ் அண்ட் அலைட் குட்ஸ் ஆல் தீஸ் செக்டர்ஸ் வில் பி ஓப்பன்டு ஃபார் த அமெரிக்கன் கம்பெனிஸ் அண்ட் லைக் வாட் அமெரிக்கா வில் டூ ஃபார் சைனா மீன்ஸ் ஆக்சுவலி லைக் சைனா வில் ஓப்பன் தயர் இங்கே லைக் ஆஸ் எ ரெசி ப்ரோக்கர்சிட்டி சைனா வில் ஓப்பன் தயர் பேங்கிங் செக்டர் இன்சூரன்ஸ் செக்டர் அண்ட் அமெரிக்கா வில் ஆக்சுவலி ஆஸ் எ ரெசி ப்ரோக்கர்சிட்டி இட் வில் ட்ரை டு லைக் ensure that you china is going and purchasing its farm products so basically if you see it will majorly benefit to usa only so in addition to that what happened is that uh, there are still lot of things to do because we know friends uh, 15% tariff rate they have reduced only 15% still uh, tariff is left out that they are going and discussing as part of phase 2 trade deal still negotiations are on because this year um, we have that um, usa like uh, elections are going to have for the presidential election is going to happen uh, they are actually go- uh, they wanted to fast track this phase 2 trade deal also and in addition to that there are two things still they have not solved one is that the core of the bilateral dispute what, what they are having is that chinese governments are actually the state owned companies are subsidizing the products and they are selling at, at a lower price in the us country that is one problem still it has not been solved second china has been, us has accused china of devaluing their currency so by devaluation what will happen means chinese goods will be actually very cheaper in usa market for this also usa is very to, very critical so these issues still like it remains unsolved நெக்ஸ்ட் ஆர்டிகல் இஸ் சுப்ரீம் கோர்ட் ஆக்ஸ் கவர்மெண்ட் டூ ரெஸ்பாண்ட் டு ப்ளீ அகேன்ஸ்ட் என்பிஆர் பேசிக்கலி ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் இஃப் யூ சி திஸ் ஆர்டிகல் கம்ஸ் இன் த பேக் ட்ராப் ஆஃப் அவர் ஆனரபிள் பிரைம் மினிஸ்டர் நரேந்திர மோடி ஹூ ஹஸ் செட் தட் அவர் கவர்மெண்ட் இஸ் ஒன்லி டூயிங் என்பிஆர் எக்ஸசைஸ் அண்ட் தேர் ஹஸ் பின் நாட் ஈவன் இன் டிஸ்கஷன் ஆஃப் என்ஆர்சி த வேர்ட் என்ஆர்சி ஒன்லி ஹஸ் நாட் பின் டிஸ்கஸ்ட் இன் த கேபினெட் மீட்டிங் இஸ் செட் இட் அண்ட் த கவர்மெண்ட் இஸ் இன் நோ ஐடியா டு கண்டக்ட் திஸ் என்ஆர்சி எக்ஸசைஸ் இ டோல்ட் நவ் வாட் ஹேப்பண்ட் ஆஸ் பார்ட் ஆஃப் என்பிஆர் எக்ஸசைஸ் அவர் கவர்மெண்ட் இன்டெரக்ட்லி இட் கலெக்டட் இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் ரிலேட்டட் to nrc like uh, uh, father and mother's place of birth and then aadhar card number and then driving license number mobile number all these datas were collected which can be used to prepare a nrc data indirectly so now what happened a petition was filed in the supreme court saying that uh, when government itself uh, actually like our even honorable prime minister narendra modi himself said that the government has no plan of conducting nrc exercise so nrc then why we are actually uh, like doing this so he is asking what is the need to prepare npr if the government has taken a policy decision to abate this uh, exercise so basic idea is they wanted to I say that the grant of uh, in addition to that there was one more thing is just happening is that already the citizenship amendment act they are actually wanted to take it as and they wanted to challenge it and declare it as unconstitutional in addition this is also adding fuel to the fire why because uh, when they they are actually asking the supreme court to declare it very frankly that uh, only N- npr exercise will be conducted and that this nrc exercise is a wastage of resources only so they wanted to declare from the supreme court only that's why the petition was filed next article is plea in supreme court says internet access should be a right so basically what happened is that in the supreme court uh, there was a petition filed which challenged the article 370 status and then uh, like um, in the internet has been shut down in the various parts of kashmir all this has been challenged as part of that supreme court has also instructed the government to restore the internet connection so now what happened in this particular case supreme court has not uh, clearly told whether right to access internet forms part of fundamental right or not since this statement has not been very made very clear by the supreme court a petition has now been filed again to ask whether this uh, right to use internet comes under the articles 19 and 21 of the constitution that's what this case is all about so next article is 2020 will be an important year for indo us relations so basically friends this article talks about uh, like in usa and india have a separate 2 plus 2 dialogue that is our defense and foreign minister of both the countries they will sit together so that effective trade related economic and security issues will be discussed as part of that we had a meeting last year only in december 2019 and so the in that uh, we made some decisions and that decisions we wanted to implement when uh, like uh, like uh, us president trump is visiting india they wanted to implement all the decisions negotiations which were made so basically they wanted uh, to uh, have cooperation in infrastructure development counter terrorism and regional connectivity as part of regional den- connectivity only we are uh, having a blue dot scheme which we will discuss friends so blue dot network this is what uh, a new concept this is very very important for this year prelims and main examination so kindly remember this friends this is launched by usa japan and australia together they are actually encouraging private in- investment in infrastructure and this is actually considered to be a counter to belt and road initiative of china 
so what happens is that in belt and road initiative chinese government will like there's there there is a exim bank of china they will actually their banks and chinese government will give loans to the countries where this uh, road and rail infrastructures they are building but in blue dot network there is no any investment will be given there will be no funds or loans will be given it is just a rating mechanism it will rate the infrastructure project so that it will promote transparency so now what happens is that if, through this rating it wanted to have a minimum environmental standards labor standards all this it wanted to promote so in addition if you see who will form uh, like uh, will come and participate in this blue dot network means governments will come and participate private sectors will participate even various civil society who have a very high quality standard they will come and they will uh, like uh, collectively they will go and rate this various infrastructure projects across the world so now what happens is that uh, so there has been this uh, giant this was initially if you see friends this was launched on the sidelines of 35th asian summit in thailand at the time it was launched only by usa and australia and japan joined later and now what is the update is they are actually asking india also to join in this blue dot network because india has not joined the uh, chinese based belt and road initiative so india is still skeptical why because india is saying that there is a sovereign issue that is prevailing because chinese has constructed this uh, belt road through this uh, like a uh, gilgit balistan road where our kashmir pok kashmir is there that's why india is very uh, criticized about this and it has not joined the belt and road initiative which is uh, run by china so it is actually very curious about joining this blue dot network so if you see friends these are the major objectives it will be a market driven private sectors will participate they wanted to give we establish environmentally responsible infrastructure and financially sustainable because the major criticism in belt and road initiative of china is it is a debt trap they will say because chinese governments they are purposefully giving loans to other countries and that will make them to go in a series of debt trap but here that will not happen they are saying and it will also promote transparency because third parties they will civil societies will also come and do their ratings and it will be inclusive many countries will be included in this next article is russia china diverge on kashmir issue this article comes in the backdrop of recent unsc summit where actually china wanted to bring the kashmir issue because pakistan was on the backdrop it insisted china to do this now what happened is that uh, <coughs> india has uh, now it has this resolution has not been adopted in the unsc because other permanent veto countries they didn't accept the chinese based resolution now india is very opposed to like why china is bringing a bilateral issue on a multilateral platform because we have already made made it very clear kashmir is our own bilateral dispute as part of shimla card 1972 and we will discuss this only between india and pakistan and there is no any third party interference is needed and moscow also agreed on this front but china what it is saying means it is still saying that multilateral diplomacy is needed for solving this crisis next article is china's birth rate hits its lowest level basically what happens is that china is having a very aging population so china what happen previously it had a one child policy because it was having a very high population in the world that time it went for this and forced sterilization camps are also been set up and population has been reduced now what is the problem is they are having a age, aging society because many of the people as in the demographically if you see they were in the like uh, age group which are considered to be much higher old age group and then workforce uh, like uh, active labor who are looking for the youth group who can come and work actively that is also shrinking so it can affect an economy which is already in the slow down phase thank you friends kindly subscribe to our channel if you have any doubts please post your doubts in the comment section